Hello everyone in Cyber World. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Richard. And this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. This week is part two of our Murphy bed project. We're going to show you how we stain and put on the polyurethane. And before we get into that, we're also going to show you how we did edge banding. Now, this seems kind of out of whack uh, because normally you put that on at the very end of a build, but um, our project is so large that we would have to uh, carry the whole bed upstairs after we built it in the garage and it just wasn't going to be feasible. So unfortunately, what we decided to do was cut up all the pieces uh, as we've shown in part, uh, part one, then we're going to go ahead and stain and eventually we're going to do the assembly in the bedroom itself. So let's go ahead and show you how we do this. But wait, if you enjoy our video, please hit that like button, leave us a comment or subscribe below. And now on with the video. Okay, now that we finally finished cutting everything, the next step is we're going to be adding this, what they refer to as edge banding. And what edge banding is, as we kind of described briefly at the very beginning, is just a strip that looks like wood. It's a veneer. The veneer has a bottom side which has glue on it. All it does, by put, placing it on here, you run a hot iron on it, it melts the glue, and this sticks on it. So right now, the plywood has bunches of layer. That's how plywood is made. It's made of layer, layer, layers that are, that are glued together. But if this is showing up on your furniture, it doesn't look as good. So what this edging does is it fakes it, it covers it, and it makes it look like this entire piece is a solid piece of wood as opposed to plywood. So now, what do we have to do? The instructions show you exactly what parts you have to put the edging on. You're not going to put it on every single piece, only pieces that are going to be seen by the eye. So the instructions tell you by part, and since we've already marked um, uh, these boards and where they're going to be going, uh, the next thing that we know is we know that in this particular case, item GA requires banding. And so what we've done is we've put X's on here. We don't need banding on this side because it's going to be hidden. No one will be able to see it. So we're starting to put X's on everything so we know where we have to band instead of looking at the manual, banding one, looking at the manual, banding two. We're just marking everything so that we can go, go, go. Let's go. After adding the edge banding, trim off the excess with a razor or sharp knife. Don't worry if you can't trim it off perfectly. We're going to be sanding it so it's level. While uh, trimming the uh, band edging to make sure that it was level and so forth, um, the razor blade pulled some of the edging up just a little bit in places. That was because the glue didn't melt on it properly. Um, so what I recommend that you do after you uh, cut off the, um, the excess, go back over it with an iron just to make sure that everything is on there and that it's gonna stay on there permanently.
Now, um, but we also showed, talked about uh, one of the things that you want to do before you stain is you want to do use a pre-stain. Now, what the pre-stain does is it works with uh, porous woods, and if you just put stain straight on it, you'll find that sometimes the stain will go deeper in some places and not so deep on other places, and you get spotchy, spotty uh, blotches on the wood, and it doesn't look as good. What the, the pre-stain does is it fills the wood up, once it's dried, then you put the stain on, and it gives it a nice level um, look all about it, and it's even. All right, now, we have purchased, uh, what was it, oak, all right? Oak is a uh, solid wood that's not porous, and so we're not actually going to need the pre-stain, but we wanted to point this out uh, to let you know if you decide to do this yourselves. We purchased the pre-stain anyways because in addition to the bed, we're going to be building some other cabinets and uh, shelves and stuff that we're going to be adding to the Murphy bed and those pieces we might have to use pine and some other things and so we wanted to get some pre-stain for that. So now we're going to go ahead and show you how we're going to do this fun project. Let's go ahead and take a look. As we previously mentioned, each can of stain has a slight variance in color so we poured them into a single can and stirred them to make a single matching color. We first started off applying the stain with a sponge, but it was taking too long, so we used a rag instead. the stain we waited about two or three minutes and then we wiped the stain off with a clean rag. We allowed the stain to dry for an hour, and then it was time to apply polyurethane. We thought the best thing to do was to apply polyurethane with a foam roller. As per the instructions on the polyurethane, we allowed it to dry for one hour and then lightly sanded it using 320 grit sandpaper. When sanding, you only need to sand very lightly. You will be able to feel the bumps from the polyurethane smoothing out very easily. sanding, we wanted to make sure that the area was completely dust free, so we vacuumed it first and then used a microfiber towel to wipe it off.
we repeated this whole process of adding polyurethane and sanding until we got three coats. On the third coat of adding polyurethane, it was smooth and you do not have to do any more sanding.